Israel's IAI, now the sole contender for the IAF's rupees 8,000 crore tanker project, has affirmed full compliance with the 30% Make in India mandate. The proposed deal involves converting six pre-owned Boeing 767 aircraft into modern aerial refuelers to replace the aging IL-78 fleet. Backed by global experience in tanker conversions, IAI says it is fully aligned with India's localization goals. The program will significantly boost the IAF's long-range operations and force projection capability. India's nuclear deterrence is set for a powerful boost, as INS Aritaman, the nation's third nuclear ballistic missile submarine, nears commissioning. Now in its final sea trial phase, the Arihant-class SSBN brings an 83-megawatt indigenous reactor and the capability to launch K-15 and K-4 ballistic missiles. With over 90% indigenous content, the submarine marks a major leap in underwater strike power, joining Arihant and Aragat, to strengthen India's credible second strike capability. India's defense manufacturing drive gains momentum as JSW Defense and US Space Shield AI begin a 90 million US dollars project to build a state of the art drone facility in Hyderabad. The partnership will produce VBAT Group 3 unmanned aerial systems under a long term technology transfer program creating a local supply chain and a global production hub. Manufacturing will start by late 2026, marking a major push toward next-generation UAV capability and deepening Indo-US strategic defense cooperation. India's defense tech market is set for explosive growth, soaring from $7.6 billion in 2025 to $19 billion by 2030. With technology-driven systems, poised to make up half the defense sector, demand is surging in AI, autonomous platforms, counter-drone tech, and advanced sensors. But a sharp shortage of specialized engineers threatens to slow progress. As counter-drone solutions dominate startup funding, experts warn, India must scale its defense-ready talent five to six times to sustain momentum and global competitiveness. India is set to dispatch the final batch of BrahMos supersonic missiles to the Philippines, completing a landmark $375 million defense deal by year-end. With this delivery, Manila will field three fully operational coastal batteries, capable of Mach 2.8 strikes up to 290 kilometers, significantly boosting its deterrence in the South China Sea. The package includes launchers, radars, command systems, and extensive training. This milestone cements India's emergence as a major defense exporter and deepens Indo-Philippine strategic cooperation. Despite the tragic Tejas crash at the Dubai Air Show, defense analyst Patricia Marins, an independent analyst specializing in Europe and Eurasia, has strongly advocated continued investment in India's LCA program. She highlights Tejas's low radar cross-section advanced composite design, and its strong compatibility with the Su-30 MKI and potential Su-57 fleet. Marins calls the upcoming UTOM MK2 gallium nitride AESA radar a game-changing upgrade enhancing detection, jamming resistance and export potential. The crash, which killed Wing Commander Namanch Sial during aerobatic maneuvers, has triggered a joint India-UAE investigation. With Tejas MK1A and MK2 set for future induction, Marin says the program remains vital for India's air power modernization. India has achieved a major milestone in defense technology as DRDO successfully conducted a high-speed rocket sled test of a fighter aircraft escape system at Terminal Ballistics Research Laboratory Chandigarh. The trial reached 800 km per hour, validating canopy severance, ejection sequencing and complete aircrew recovery using the LCA Tejas for Bodhi and an instrumented test dummy. The dynamic test, far more demanding than static trials, places India among a select group of nations with advanced escape system testing capability. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh hailed the achievement as a key step toward self-reliance, with the RTRS facility continuing to support critical aerospace and space mission testing.
India has made no decision on acquiring Russia's Su-57 fifth-generation fighter, with top government sources confirming that no serious discussions will take place even during President Putin's upcoming visit. While the aircraft was evaluated at Aero India, officials say nothing concrete has emerged. India may eventually need 40 to 60 fifth-generation jets as a stopgap before the AMCA arrives, with options ranging from the Su-57 to the American F-35. Preliminary talks with European and Japanese sixth-generation programs also continue. For now, however, India remains undecided, keeping its future fighter roadmap open and politically sensitive. That's all for now. Hope you like this video. Please like, share and subscribe for daily news updates. Thanks for watching.